Hello, I'm Terry Wright and I'm a homeopath and thyroid nutrition specialist. Today I'm going to be talking about thyroid, master of metabolism, often misunderstood and abused. So today in America we have 59 million Americans with thyroid problems and half of them don't even understand that they have a thyroid problem. About 80% are women, 20% are men. So I'm going to be talking about how the thyroid works, what it needs to be happy and healthy, and what you can do to help yourself if you believe or know you have a thyroid condition. So we'll start with the basics. The thyroid is right here in the throat. First you put your finger on your Adam's apple and right under that we have the thyroid. So it's a small butterfly shaped gland, weighs less than an ounce. In a year it makes a teaspoonful of hormones, but they have a profound effect on our body. And so they drive metabolism, help our cells to utilize oxygen and synthesize proteins. So here's your thyroid. See it is butterfly shaped. There's a right and a left lobe with the isthmus in the middle wraps around the trachea or the windpipe. And when it's working well, we have healthy heart, healthy hormones, uh, good energy, we sleep well, and a lot of other good things. When it's not working well, we can have fatigue, dry skin, hair falling out, loss of the outer eyebrow, constipation, insomnia, and many other unpleasant conditions. This is the thyroid control system. So here we have the thyroid and it's releasing its T3 and T4 hormones into the body. And so as we do that, we get increased metabolism. We have growth and development. We have increased catecholamine effect. That means it helps your adrenals to work. And your adrenals are part of your energy system. And so the thyroid and the adrenals work together, together to give us good energy. So ideally what happens here is when thyroid hormones are utilized, then the blood levels get low and the hypothalamus, the gland in the brain here, releases this thyrotropin releasing hormone and it tells the pituitary to release the thyroid stimulating hormone. And this tells the thyroid to produce more hormones. Unfortunately, this thyroid stimulating hormone is the only thing that a lot of practitioners test for when there are 10 other factors that help with thyroid function, optimal thyroid function. So some of these include uh, healthy vitamin and mineral levels. So if we have deficiencies, then the thyroid can't work very well. We can also have um, environmental factors. So these include things like uh, heavy metals, some of the most prominent are uh, lead, we also have mercury, and we have uh, arsenic that really don't help the thyroid to work well at all. We can also have uh, herbicides. And pesticides. Uh, Ametrol is an herbicide used to kill uh, aquatic uh, weeds. It's not supposed to be used on uh, food crops, but it does get into food crops because it's in the water. 
and I have found this on several clients testing results and this definitely interferes with thyroid function. In fact it's so bad it's called a goitrogen which means it produces goiters or swelling of the thyroid which indicates the thyroid is under stress and is not working properly. That was banned in the in the European uh, market, common market, uh, in 2009, but still in use in the United States. Another problem area is plastics, and these include phthalates. So phthalates are what's used to make plastic softer. So you can find them in drinking cups, drinking containers, food containers made of plastic, and uh, many other things. Over a billion pounds of phthalates are produced for uh, commercial use every year in the world. Uh, another area where they can be found uh, can be uh, breast implants or other implants put into people's bodies. So this is definitely something that negatively affects the thyroid. Some other things to consider include the function of the other glands that control the thyroid, so the pituitary and the hypothalamus. Those aren't working properly and the thyroid's not going to work properly because they're helping to control it. Another area of problems can be hidden viral or bacterial infections. So the hypothyroid is the most common condition. It can be influenced by all of these factors. Also genetic weaknesses. So uh, autoimmune hypothyroid condition is called Hashimoto's autoimmune thyroiditis. That's when we have the body's immune system attacking itself and white blood cells will attack the thyroid and can destroy it. So that seems to be increasingly more common. Of course, not that surprising that we have all these chemicals and many more that affect the thyroid. Food dye is another example. Latest research shows that food dyes can affect the thyroid very negatively. So think about it next time you eat your favorite Fruit Loop cereal. <clears throat> Food allergies are another area where the thyroid can be affected. And so when we have a food that we may be sensitive to, such as wheat or gluten, or perhaps dairy foods, uh, there can be other foods too can be an autoimmune reaction to those types of foods. Now, the opposite of the hypothyroid is the hyperthyroid. So this is low and this is high or too much. So when we produce too many thyroid hormones, we have what's called hyperthyroidism. It's much less prevalent than hypothyroid. In fact, hypothyroid is about 16% of the population, whereas hyperthyroid is only about 1%. But this produces weakness, you can have rapid heartbeat, rapid bowel movements, nervousness, tremors, insomnia and other unpleasant symptoms. Graves' disease is the autoimmune version of 
hyperthyroidism. And in that case, antibodies which mimic thyroid stimulating hormone cause the thyroid to produce more hormones all the time. So we need to look to what's causing the autoimmune response. And typically conventional practitioners may want to irradiate the thyroid in such cases or destroy it or surgically remove it or use medications to suppress it but these do not get to the cause of the problem. Our testing, the DNA testing, designed to get to the cause of the problem. So if you suspect or you know you have a thyroid problem, what are some things you can do for yourself? Well, you can certainly avoid uh, goitrogenic foods or foods that suppress the thyroid. And these are cruciferous vegetables like cabbage, cauliflower, kale, uh, kohlrabi, Brussels sprouts, and so these have a very suppressing effect on the thyroid. Also soy foods, so tofu, soy milk, uh, soy hot dogs or hamburgers, a lot of these vegetarian alternatives are made with uh, soy protein. Food bars, uh, those types of bars can have soy in them. So you want to avoid soy. Uh, you want to you know, avoid eating processed foods as much as possible because of all the additives, coloring agents, flavoring agents, fillers, thickeners, stabilizers, uh, high fructose corn syrup, MSG. Uh, none of these things are good for us anyhow and they're certainly not good for the thyroid. So eating more uh, fresh whole foods, processed as little as possible, uh, organic if possible is the best way to go to help heal your thyroid. I don't believe in a one diet fits all for thyroid issues. Uh, we do the food allergy testing on every client to find out what foods may be causing them issues and depending on um, other factors and preferences we can help design a diet that will help to strengthen them and help help their thyroid to get well naturally. So if you'd like to have more information about how our programs work, the DNA testing, you can go to my website, homeopathicrecoverycenter.com, and you will have lots of information there. Or you can certainly call me, 678-663-4411, and I can help anyone. I'm here in Georgia. But I can also help anyone in the United States because we can do long-range testing and help folks out that way too. So I hope this has been helpful for you. I look forward to speaking to you again soon. God bless.